Hello and welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today. We've got a little bit of sunshine here on recording day which always makes me think of spring and summer and that brings me to floral designs. For our free tutorial today here on YouTube I'd like to introduce some beginner accessible floral designs which I make into keepsakes for corsages and boutonnieres. Now they're not great for children but for adult gifts they're really really lovely and it's a design which will last forever. If it's kept in a box it won't get squished, it'll be perfect, whereas sometimes your dried flowers don't always stay as impeccable as you might like. So if you'd like to join me down at the board I'll show you a couple of design ideas using the same basic technique and then we'll get to making them together. I hope that you enjoy this. So I've made the same basic technique accessible for absolute beginners using just one gauge of wire. Now we will be revisiting this design later on in the year, adding in some colourful beads for slightly more impact, but for today I wanted to bring a completely beginner accessible design for boutonnieres and for corsages. Basically the corsage is just two of the boutonnieres put together, which is a really really neat way of learning one technique and then making two different things with it. So I am going to show you using copper wire on the board because it shows up better. And what you will need is four lengths. I'm working in 0.8 millimeter or 20 gauge wire today. Once you've mastered the technique, you absolutely can take this up a level to your 18 gauge, which is equivalent to one millimeter. These are six inch lengths and what I'm going to do is start by having the majority of the wire on my dominant side and then making a bend about three and a half to four inches from that end. The shorter tail on this side becomes the length of tail that sits inside the buttonhole or the boutonniere pocket if you have one. And then this three and a half to four inch side becomes the petal of our flower. So having some lovely fluidity and warmth in the wire at this time is really key to making a beautiful design. So I'm just getting that super toasty and warm before using my thumb just to generate that first little swooshing arc. And then using my forefinger on the other side to draw that back in the opposite direction. So it's that traditional, if you're used to my videos, it's like a half a lemon at this stage. I'm then going to bring in my bent chain nose pliers up at the very, very top, turn the end back down, twist the design around and support the very tip of the flower just there. And then swooshing that design around again to draw it across at the first angle that we made. Now I'm just going to grip the wire like so, and that's the arcing wire, not the previously bent wire, and I'm just going to draw that little tail all the way around underneath the neck of the design, then I'm going to switch my pliers to support that section and draw the tail over the top. So you can see we've made the petal, we're now going to make a little stamen. So again, having warmth in the wire is really handy at this stage, so I'm just going to draw that around and across. I've popped a little kick on the end, but what you can do if you prefer is put a little circular form on the end. So I'm going to rotate those round nose pliers around slowly to just put a lovely little shape and form. Now at this stage it really does pay to give that a tiny squish just to get that to sit down as you like it. Now it doesn't really matter if all of your forms are exactly the same size or not. If you can get them to be similarly sized then it is quite a lovely design effect. What we're going to do now is make another two of those and then just bend that shorter tail down at the back like so. So we're going to go to a production line now and make another two of those. So I've just repeated that exact same design process twice more. So I have three not quite identical leaf shapes with an angled stem on them. So I'll show you now how to join all those together with that fourth length of wire. So I have my three petal type designs and I'm just going to show them up to you at a slight angle. I need to just get those at around about the same height up at the top and then they can stagger one on top of the other if you need them to because the next thing we're going to do is take a fourth length of that 0.8 or 20 gauge wire 
and this again is around about six inches which is more than we need but that's fine what I'm going to do is just draw those three stems together carefully and wrap that wire as close to the top as I can get around about midpoint on the long length of wire we're using now. So I'm going to start by rotating that around once just so I can get some purchase and then pushing that slightly further up to the top. I'm going to take the tail now that is closer to the petals and wind that around those three bundles of stems until I fill that gap all the way to the top. You can tighten that coil up like so just by putting the pliers on either end of the coil and then you can use the tail down at the bottom to fill in as much or as little of that stem as you want to. Now when I'm making the corsages which is where I bring two designs together I tend to wrap about three times only and then trim the excess wire away just here. When I'm making these as boutonnieres, I try to take the coil of wire a little bit further along because it adds strength and longevity to the design. So I'm going to make this one as a boutonniere and I'm just going to give that a really delicate squish to get that nice and neat and tidy. And then I'll probably get a good seven or eight coils of wire around that bundle of three stems. You can just simply use all of the wire if you want to, trim that away. Now because we started in the middle of that extra wire that we've used to coil around the stems, we've got a little bit sticking up at the top and that's cool because we're going to use that to accessorize our floral design. So for this you could either use bale making pliers or your round nose pliers. I'm just going to give that a little tighten up wasn't quite as beautiful as I wanted it to be. What we're going to do is warm the tail of wire that came off the coil and is sticking out. It doesn't matter if it's not quite this long, this is ever such a long length. You can either use your round nose pliers or you can use your stepped bale making pliers. Now if you're using your round nose pliers what you will need to do is decide the size of the coil we're going to make. You could pop a little mark on if you wanted to and then you will begin to rotate the pliers around taking the cut end towards the tip of the pliers away from the box joint. What you'll then need to do is just very very gently try and make a coil that is the same dimension all the way along. So what I'm going to do now is switch to my stepped bale makers. Let's see if I can get that second step in. No, nope, we're going for the first step. And I'll show you the benefit of stepped bale makers instead. I think I might unwind this. I've shown you how to do that with the round nose pliers if you don't have bale makers. I'm going to show you now why having bale making pliers is not just for making bales. So I'm going to choose the number two size and just start rotating that wire around on the pin and you'll see that what we're getting is a nice coil of wire that is the same dimension all the way along and that's rotating and moving away from the joint towards the tip of those pliers they're really handy to have what we're going to do now is open up that coil into a spring like design just by gently teasing that open and then at the very very last minute we just close that top section the cut end so that it sits back against the spring part of the coil and that's really just to protect you as much as possible from that catching on clothes as I said these are not designs suitable for children they're keepsake designs they can be worn in the buttonhole and all I'm doing now is just opening up those petals let's get that springy section to just sit in the center you can add some shaping to your petals you can bend them backwards and then just the tips come forwards so you can make those a little bit more interesting if you want to. And then I'll show you that last little bit that I like to add in as well. We've got three of our stem wires down at the bottom. One is slightly shorter, so I'm just going to push that out to the side and make a coil using my round nose pliers. And this again is just adding more detail to the design. So I've started coiling up that wire and then I'm going to push that into my finger to create a nice flat coil. This could be a closed coil or you could indeed, like I'm going to allow it to do now, just let that be a little bit more open. Again, these are keepsakes, they are not for children to play with. 
you've got lots of little bits of wire sticking out so uh, they won't last if you give them to a small person they might even injure themselves which is not ideal so I'm just going to draw that coil up into the center of the boutonniere design like so and just push that around until I'm happy with how the boutonniere design looks and then I'm going to take the two remaining stems of those flowers that we made and just twist them around and I'm going to start that as if I'm twisting a key in a lock and just move down those stems and you can create by hand quite a nice neat little weave or a little coil a double helix until you get close to the bottom and then you'll start regretting using your fingers and wishing you'd use pliers so I'm going to trim that away into the scrap pot and you can see that you've got a really lovely boutonniere really simple design idea and very very malleable wire once you've got the hang of the technique you can absolutely take this up to a slightly heavier gauge wire and in that way they will last just a little bit longer what I'd like to do now is show you how you can take two boutonnieres together, combine them into what's a little bit more like a corsage, a little bit more detail. Now you can layer these up in as many bundles as you want. You don't even have to go for three petals together. You could go for five or six. It's entirely up to you. The key technique is to join them neatly by coiling wire around the stems and then you can use the ends of those uh, wrapping wire just to add more detail. So I've got two little bundles of three prepared already if you'd like to join me back on the board I'll show you how we can make that into a corsage now so I have two boutonnieres that I prepared in exactly the same way I've just showed you so instead of twisting those two bases what we're going to do is wrap them together to create one mega floral arrangement so I'm just bending those extra bits up and out of the way doesn't matter where they go in the design they could fold underneath it's it's quite fluid in how you make this happen so let's take them out to the sides both the spring and the coil so that we can pop those all together like so you can even get them to just cross over and layer up and you can play around with how the flowers sit at a later date so if I just push everything up and out of the way what we're going to do is the exact same technique as we had before but rather than adding an extra layer of wiring we've got three stems down at the bottom now if you want to add lots more detail with these coil springs and little coils sticking out at the top then by all means go for the exact same technique of adding a supplementary length of wire coiling all around but what I'm going to do is choose one of these stems and start wrapping that around the remaining three stems so that's a couple of turns to get me started and then I might bring in the pliers and just give that a little bit more strength. So we've now got a slightly shorter tail here. Now, rather than trying to turn that into a coil or a spring, I think I'm going to give the whole design a little bit more rigidity, coming down those stems, turning by hand. And this is the beauty of working with that 0.8 or 20 gauge wire, is that you can do a lot of it by hand and it's just really that last little bit where your fingertips will thank you for using the pliers just to get that end nice and neat. Now you've got another long tail here which I am going to turn up and away and I'm going to make that into another coil just to bring up underneath the rest of the corsage. I might do that in a slightly different size, I might do it in the same size. Honestly I can't even remember what size we used before so this is the one we're going for now. Coiling around you could use your round nose pliers as I showed you earlier, it's just slightly neater to have one of these. I'm just going to bring that back slightly before I take the very, very end and pull that out into a nice spring design. Now you can see we've got an open section here and that is definitely a snag risk. So I'm just going to squish down that last little bit so that the end sits away inside the design as much as possible like so it will still catch as I said not for children so I'm going to find a place for that to sit up in the rest of the corsage and be a part of the design before taking those last two wires down at the bottom and twisting them to create that strong segment that we finish off with now if you struggle with grip strength and you can't create a nice neat key turn like this you can employ pliers 
what you tend to do with pliers is one will go off to the side which is why I like to open splay those wires out and try to do this by hand as much as possible what you could do is add a little extra wire to your design at the beginning and then just trim away the excess down at the base so that it doesn't get too messy so all you would need to do now is a little light flower arranging so I'm going to pull those springs and coils into position and just get that to sit however I want it to now if you're concerned about the sharp edges you can make a small loop on the end or you can bring that all the way around and then attach it to fabric it depends how you want to use the designs but you've got lots of little floral aspects again you can add dimension to the designs by bending those petals you can do that by hand because it's a light enough wire or you can use pliers as I showed you earlier on kind of looks like a lovely lily now so let me bring in some of the examples we've worked on today so you've got a couple of corsages in the silver color wire here and then you've got a couple of boutonnieres, one in copper and one in silver. I could make these all day, every day. I absolutely love them. They're very, very mindful. Um, I'm rubbish at keeping plants alive, so uh, this is my gardening. So I hope that you've enjoyed the boutonniere and corsage design with me today. As I mentioned a couple of times, just as a bit of a disclaimer, these are not toys, they're not for children, they are for decorative wear and for keepsake purposes. I hope that you have a beautiful, beautiful day and I look forward to seeing you again back on the Gemhawks YouTube channel very, very soon. Bye for now.